Well, it's time now for the day's main business news. And the UK has struck a deal to join the Pan-Pacific Trade Partnership, even though it's not located on the Pacific Rim. Yuko Royer from our business desk is here to tell us all about that. Sharon, it's a strategic, uh, symbolic win for the UK that's been looking to bolster global trade ties uh, since it left the European Union. Now, once the deal is formally signed, expected in the summer, it will become the first European nation to join the CPTPP, a trade partnership that was inaugurated in its current form back in 2018, after the United States pulled out under President Donald Trump. Lisa Kaminov reports. Symbolic gain which will bring a geopolitical win for post-Brexit UK. Britain will join the comprehensive and progressive agreement for Trans-Pacific Partnership, the CPTPP, a pan-Pacific free trade bloc whose 11 members include Australia, Japan and Canada. UK Prime Minister announced the news after months of negotiations with the CPTPP bloc, promising economic benefits for the post-Brexit era. Joining the CPTPP trade bloc puts the UK at the centre of a dynamic and growing group of Pacific economies as the first new nation and first European country to join. British businesses will now enjoy unparalleled access to markets from Europe to the South Pacific. Though member countries are geographically far from Britain, experts say that forming ties with these fast-growing economies will boost the country's economic growth and geopolitical relations. Britain's exports to CPTPP countries were worth £60.5 billion in the last 12 months, but its membership will add another £1.8 billion each year over the long term, giving the bloc a combined GDP of £11 trillion, the equivalent of 15% of the global GDP. The deal will ensure zero tariff trade across multiple export sectors, including the dairy, alcohol and automotive industries. Tariffs will also be reduced on imports of bananas, rice, crab sticks and palm oil. Countries like China, Taiwan, Ecuador and Costa Rica are also applying for membership. Chinese e-commerce firm JD.com will spin off its industrial and property units and list both of them on the Hong Kong Stock Exchange. The company will continue to own 50% of the subsidiaries. The decision comes hot on the heels of another e-commerce giant Alibaba deciding to break up into six units. Like Alibaba, JD.com has been hit hard by Beijing's regulatory crackdown on the tech sector, losing more than a third of its market value over the past two years. JD.com's share price in Hong Kong rose more than 6% on the news after its US-listed shares also surged. Asia markets were positive overall. Tokyo ending the day up more than 9 tenths of a percent as new data showed inflation in the Japanese capital eased for a second month in a row. European markets started trading on a positive note too as investors await the next inflation data for the eurozone for the month of March. The CPI cooled to 8.5% in February. The US government is expected to give guidance on tax breaks for consumers buying clean cars, and policymakers in Brussels are closely monitoring how the new rules will impact the European auto industry. American carmakers are also weighing the consequences of new details to be announced today. Under President Biden's Inflation Reduction Act, people can get up to $7,500 in tax credit for buying a new electric car assembled in North America, but only if their batteries meet certain conditions. Half of the credit, half of that credit depends on critical minerals used in a battery and the other half on battery units. Now, a certain percentage of critical minerals contained in a battery, such as nickel and cobalt, must be either extracted or processed in the US or in countries which have free trade agreements with the US or recycled in North America. That percentage is 40% for 2023 and will increase by 10% each year up to 80%. And at least half of the vehicle's battery components, like cells and modules, has to be manufactured or assembled in North America. That share goes up eventually to 100% in 2029. The EU's Competition Commissioner says she's optimistic the bloc can clinch a deal with the US over EV battery minerals soon. The two sides agreed this month to discuss allowing companies to supply uh, minerals extracted or processed in the EU. 
Margaret Vestager said she expects the deal to be similar to what Japan signed with Washington earlier this week, adding that it's been taking time to build a legal framework. Now, the European Union exported some 36 billion euros worth of cars to the United States last year, far more than the US exports to the bloc, worth 9 billion euros. It also exported 9 billion euros of car parts to the United States, compared with just 2 billion euros coming the other way. And that's it for business. Thanks for that, Yuga. That is Yuga Royer joining us there from our business desk here at France 24.